Hi, welcome back to African Tea. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're continuing the Women's Month series and I'm going to be interviewing Bali. Bali is a bookstagrammer, so she basically does book reviews on Instagram, but she also pairs them with makeup looks. Stay tuned to hear more about her as we discuss African literature and makeup. So you are a um, bookstagrammer, <laughs> so you do book reviews on Instagram and you pair them with amazing makeup looks and yeah you're very into African books and just like um, reading books by African authors and just like promoting stories by Africans. So how would you introduce yourself? I, I actually have no idea. I would say my name is Mbadi first of all <laughs> and like you're absolutely right. I'm, so I'm currently doing my master's so I'm a student of literature and then on like social media, I do bookstagram, like you said, where I pair books with looks. Um, so yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I try to focus on African literature. Um, if not African, then black. Mm -hmm. And then if you subdivide that, women first, and then I'll deal <laughs> with everyone else. Yeah. So yeah. So um, we can just go into discussing books and African literature what would you want to talk about in that um fiction i so obviously um you know like we learn um there's non-fiction there's fiction the non-fiction has all the smart things to say which is true because i read yeah. that too and then there's fiction it's just like an escape and a what what and a na 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 but like i think um, I'm, a, I'm a person that believes that you learn from experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so like you may be, I don't know, homophobic and an experience will teach you that actually no, yeah. um, human rights are human rights, it doesn't matter, blah, 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 blah. So mm -hmm. I definitely think that, so I have a passion for fiction. I, I love fiction <laughs> with all my Thanks. heart and soul. So, yeah. um, and I believe that fiction has like valuable lessons in them mm -hmm. like nine out of ten times almost there's like less a chance of me interacting with some people i've interacted with mm -hmm. in these books and mm -hmm. therefore i've learned lessons from so uh, in terms of african literature the yes to discuss that? um so i like Truthfully, I barely read any African literature growing up. I think as a as a child, yes, my dad used to buy me like the Namhlope, this African folklore, like thickish books where it's just like little stories. Um, not little. I mean, they had <laughs> short stories. They were stories. <laughs> um, and then like high school came, and I was reading a lot of um, white Western literature. Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't know what it was, but I think in general, when you see something in the forefront, you kind of just do not think about what's on the margins. Mm -hmm. So um, I only started getting into literature or African literature once I got to university and we had to study it in the second semester. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wait, excuse me. I have been missing out because I don't know what my brain was saying. I mean, obviously life as well, you grow up sometimes believing in the rainbow nation and color blindness, et cetera, et cetera. And then life comes at you really fast because you're black. Um, so, so that's when I started realizing, wait, no, um, these are, there are gems in Africa. Our writers are talented. Um, so that's just, so it's, it's, I'm doing it because I enjoy it and I want more people to read African literature, but I'm also doing it as like a kind of a catch up because mm -hmm. I owe it to myself. I've missed out. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously I think by now I have caught up, but yeah. I enjoy it so much that I am not going to stop. Um, yeah. And it's so nice seeing your stories and um, mm -hmm. representation is so important. Mm -hmm. Seeing yourself in the books, it's just like, oh, that's me. Yeah, oh, that could be me. Yeah. Whereas before, like, it just felt like a distant fairy tale. Like, literally, it felt like mm -hmm. an actual escape because I didn't see myself. I was just watching characters be mm -hmm. Harry Potter or be Hermione. And I was just like, oh, this is cool. But I never yeah. imagined myself in Hogwarts. I never imagined myself, you know, 
in those spaces with them. Whereas now, like, I can pick up a book and I'm like, ah, ha, 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 I've gone through that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this sounds, or looks familiar. So, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what African literature is for me. Yeah, I definitely um, noticed that way, like, the white authors are more, like, in your face. Like, you're more exposed to them. Like, it's mm-hmm. kind of like a systematic thing where they are more exposed, give them more exposure. But then um, mm-hmm. I used to, like, my first half of high school, I studied in Botswana. So there I was, like, for literature, we read a lot of mm-hmm. African authors. Like, yes, we had, like, white authors and stuff, but, like, a lot of, of a lot of stories that we studied were by African mm-hmm. authors. And I never mm-hmm. really saw, like, the importance of it until I transferred to um, a school in Cape Town where most of the authors we read were white. In fact, not even most, all of the authors <laughs> were white authors. And then I was like, even then I didn't realize that, huh, something's missing until I heard from like my other school. We were doing the same course, like the same yeah. syllabus, but you know how you get to choose which books you want to read. So, mm-hmm. so our school, the one in Cape Town chose a book books by white authors and then the one in Botswana chose the book by Chiniwa Achebe um what is it called the things fall apart things fall apart they chose to study that book and then I was like Mm -hmm. oh man I wish we were doing that book so that's that's when it really hit me that oh I could really need more exposure to African authors in um, South Africa I guess no definitely and even just also the shift from like male African authors to the shift to like women authors. So yeah, it is it, like obviously like I mean things fall apart was great. I'm not gonna say that's terrible, yeah. but yeah. you know there was like there was abuse. There was like he was a terrible man mm. towards the woman in his life. Mm-hmm. Where and it was just like it kind of you even forget like you really like. Such is life. I don't even know that. <laughs> like I'm only see fighting. exactly like yeah. like it's like uh, okay, cool. Mm. It's back in the day, but then you read something like The Joys of Motherhood by Buchi Emecheta. I hope I'm saying that right. I actually have no idea. But like <laughs> she writes almost about you know the kind of same feeding, mm-hmm. but women are at the forefront and like things which she would have like shrugged past almost. Mm-hmm. and things fall apart you're like upset now and it's like mm-hmm. excuse me how dare you and like I think that's where women are valuable when it comes to writing stories mm-hmm. about Africa because nine out of ten times we are written out of it like yeah. you forget that there's even women on the African continent because yeah. it's Nelson Mandela this it's you know Steve Beaker that yeah. it's and then and then you're like oh yeah oh yeah there was an other woman ah what's her name, what's her name, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. and then it's just like, so I think that's also why I choose literature about women, because mm. I've seen how men write about us sometimes, and it's like, yeah. that's not nice. <laughs> like, what um, female authors, female African authors, like, who are your top five, or like, okay, not top five, who would you recommend, let's not compare. <laughs> Let's say all of them, they're all my top five. I don't yeah. care what they write, I like it, bring it to me. But yeah. um, locally, I really enjoy um, Mohale Mashiho. Mm-hmm. Um, she wrote The Yearning and Intruders. Um, it's a, mm-hmm. Intruders is a bunch of like short stories. But another book that I really enjoyed was The Old Drift by Namwali Sapal. She's a Zambian writer. Mm-hmm. And I have like a soft spot for multi generational historical fiction type books. Mm-hmm. Um, so she writes like you know this three generations um, kind of book, but follows but it follows the mother's line. Mm-hmm. So um, from grandmother to mother to daughter, and to some extent like granddaughter, but mm-hmm. we don't see much of that. Um, so I really enjoyed that one, and because especially because by focusing on grandmother, mother, it becomes a woman's story. Um, let's go to Nigeria. Nigeria has like, um, I don't know what they feed them, but those people yeah. can 
right like <laughs> right <laughs> like it's like they 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 are born and they fed like pieces of papers and words <laughs> and it's just like how yeah. um um book called stay with me by oh my gosh i can't remember the author right now i can see it but i <laughs> i can see but like she also she so she writes about motherhood as well but in like a whole different way where you just like what ah it will shake you like you like excuse me what is happening so and like also um who's it sefi atta i like the way she writes it's very like i'm on, i'm on simple but in a good way like it's just enough so how did you end up deciding to do book reviews and then pair them with makeup look what gave you that idea um the pandemic i'm joking i didn't <laughs> There was this um challenge. I mean, obviously, I read, and my friends knew that I read, even mm-hmm. though I didn't like share it. Um, mm-hmm. because there was actually a time when I wanted to do bookstagram like a while back in first year, since I was gonna read books anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but then at that time, I couldn't find any. Not that I was like looking, like trying my best to try and like search for them but i couldn't find any black books to grammars and it was very like the space was very wide mm-hmm. and these people had like 20 billion books and shelves on every wall mm-hmm. and every second day they were getting like thousands of rands of like worth of books and i was like i can't keep up with these people there is no way in how i will make it in this space mm-hmm. not that i want to be like yeah i'm famous now because i do books not no but like i i mean everyone is everyone seemed like they're reading fantasy and all these series i was like where am i gonna first so i kind of just withdrew and i forgot about it mm-hmm. the pandemic the, um the lockdown happened and then um it was this outfit not outfit there was this challenge called books as outfits mm-hmm. and my friend was like hey let's do the challenge and i was like girl all my all my clothes are black like <laughs> my wardrobe does not have the range to be like you know these yeah. um outfits and then she's like so i was like i'm thinking of maybe doing it with makeup because i mean i have those colors and she's like yeah do that and then i'm like okay cool i'm gonna make two outfits and i'm gonna make two makeup looks um so i posted that and i don't i don't know what happened it was like yeah oh my gosh best thing on earth i was like <laughs> please don't expect me to do this like continue but people were like when's the next one Ooh, and i was like oh, okay oh shit <laughs> they're yeah. asking for more so i did like three more and i was like okay that's the end of it so people were like no please continue um yeah i was like okay cool i'm here now there are books let me just review them as I go. Um, mm-hmm. I study it anyway. Like I study some aspect of like book reviewing. If you yeah. think about like critique, critiquing. So I was like, okay, it's time. Let's get into it. And the community or well, the black side of it <laughs> yeah. is so welcoming. Like I was in there for like two days and everyone's just saying, follow this girl. And like, I was like, how do you even wow. know part? Like, you know, <laughs> do this do this people are like have you done this okay you need to do that so you can get this and like it's just these black women who always have your back like doesn't matter what you're doing oh so great love this you know oh you look gorgeous or i just like it's they just nice all the time that's amazing and black women really are amazing it's so welcoming yeah Mm. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up our discussion. Is there anything you want to talk about? Anything else you want to say? No, not really. Just like read books. Um, okay. <laughs> fiction, even better. If it's yeah. written by a woman or a person who was part of the LGBTQIA+, <laughs> even better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, and like support local writers they are amazing they are talented mm-hmm. um they're learning you know they're doing what they can do and i'm just really excited 
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next video. Oh, and this is the last interview in the series. So next week, we're going back to regular videos. Okay. Welcome back to our notes.